Hello guys and welcome to another Pixo 3D tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make this really cool bird dance animation. We're going to be using some free resources like this motion capture character, but I'm going to be showing you how to make a really super duper easy beak, just quickly with the modeling, how to add this material, um, the, the, the feathers, and then how to actually add the dynamics for the hair, and how to add this cool color gradient effect here. This is actually really beginner friendly. So I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. I will be including the Patreon file. So check that out in the description below. But other than that, pretty straightforward. And by the way, if you guys want to go in the description below, I've got two other channels that you guys might not know about. One of them I do arts and crafts and the other one I do music. So check that out in the description. If you guys subscribe to that, it really helps me out and it doesn't cost you anything. So um, yeah, let's jump right into it. Going to be a ton of fun. So the only asset we're going to be needing to download here is a model with some motion capture data. So I'm going to be using Adobe Mixamo. I've covered this heaps of times on my channel, but I'll put a link in the description below, or you can just go online and type in www.mixamo.com. It's free to create an account. It doesn't cost anything. And once you're there, you're just going to go to characters. And I've already selected this character here, which I think just works fantastic, but there's a whole bunch to work for work with, but the reason I go with this one because it's nice and smooth and it's nothing to really get in the way. So just browse through, it's just called Mannequin, you'll eventually find it. Um, I'll just type in here Man, so you guys can see what I mean. And there it is, the Mannequin. Once you have that selected, it'll load it into here and you're gonna go to Animations and you can choose from any one you want, but I typed in Chicken and I got the Chicken Dance, which I just clicked on and it loaded it into here. Once you're done with that, you're just gonna go to Download and change this to 24 frames a second, which is the native in Blender. The frame right there and you don't have to change anything here just make sure it is fbx if it isn't by default and then you can click on a download now i'm not going to click download because i've already downloaded this it's already in my um, downloads folder but you guys go ahead and do that it should just be an fbx called chicken dance and for simplicity's sake i'm going to drag mine onto my desktop i just prefer to do that when i'm making tutorials and then what you're going to do is you're going to launch blender so i'm just going to launch the 3.32 stable build of blender and then what you're gonna do is, let's just select all of the default objects and just delete them. Let's go to file, we're gonna to go to import and let's go to the FBX option here. Go to wherever you have that folder. For me, it's on my desktop. I'm just gonna to go to chickendance.fbx, import FBX. And here we have it right inside of Blender, as you can see. Hit the space bar, it's playing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna make this 115 frames. And that should be about the same amount we have here with the keyframes by default. And now it should be relatively um, loopable. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, perfect. Um, for organization sake, let's grab the rig. Let's just press M. New collection, this is called rig. Go okay. And now we have a collection here. Let's just take all of those things here. All right, so now it's out of the way. And we just have our guy to work with here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna start doing some cool things um, with the particles, but maybe we should make the beak first. So let's make the little beak first. I think that's quite cool. So let's just stop the animation and um, let's just go make sure we're in this main collection here at the top. We're gonna go Shift A. Let's just add in a quick cube, tab into edit mode, and then go S to scale that down. About this much. Go into your right orthographic view and uh, let's just go into the X-ray mode here and let's just select this face here at the front move it back a little bit and then go E to extrude, rotate it a little bit and E to extrude about that much. Let's select this face up here, still in our right view and let's move that down and we're just making a rough beak shape like that. Let's go to the front view and uh, in fact, let's go to the top view. Let's select um, this face here at the front, enable proportional editing. And let's go S, X, and just roll the middle mouse button to control that fall off. We just want to scale it in like so, just to kind of narrow that beak out a little bit. Okay, that's looking good. And um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to select these bottom faces, these three bottom faces, and one at the back. Go X and delete faces. And let's turn off that mirror, um, X ray. And now we have this. Let's just chuck a subdivision surface on that. Bump it up, and we can also press A to select everything, E to extrude, right click to let go, and then we can go Alt S and scale those new faces out along the normals a little bit, just to add some thickness. And while we're in edit mode, press A to select everything, Shift D to duplicate it, bring it down, and then go R, Y, 
180 to rotate it. S to scale it down a bit and then R to rotate and then G just moves that bottom part up. And now that looks like a beak. Quick and dirty, but it does the job. Tab back out and let's go G and move it to the top like so. Now let's just quickly bring back in that rig here. Okay, let's select it and let's go into pose mode and make sure you select all of it and go Alt G and Alt R just to temporarily reset the transforms here. And let's go back into object mode. And now let's select this beak and go G, Z, move it up. S to scale it however big you want it. And in the right view, I'm just gonna move it up to here. So that looks good to me. I'm gonna go right click, shade smooth. And now with this active, I'm gonna hold in shift and select this rig. Let's go back into our pose mode. And uh, let's select this head bone. Just left click on that head bone. It's now active and let's go control P and then to bone. So now this active element is parented to this active bone. So now if I were to rotate this bone, you can see that follows along. So let's go back into object mode. And now if we just hit the space bar, that's all gonna go along. Okay, so now he has a little beak, not too hard. So now we can get into the fun stuff and that's gonna be making our um, particles here for the hair. So now while we have our character mesh active, let's just select it. Um, let's hide that rig layer again. We don't need to see that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to our particles settings here. We have our mesh active once again. And under our particles, we're just gonna go and click on this little plus and let's make that hair. Looks crazy at the moment. So let's take this length down to 0.2 or maybe even 0.17. I think that's what I did originally at the scale. And uh, let's go to advanced and under the render, let's bump the, um, let's just enable B spline for this. And also under the viewport display, so it looks a bit nicer, let's just increase the strand steps to three. Um, let's also go down to the children and make it interpolated. So now each one of those parent particles have some children. And um, the main thing as well that we want to come here is enable dynamics up here. So now if we go to frame one, and this is going to be a bit slow, but if you hit spacebar now, you should see it's simulating with dynamics. Now, it's actually going through the body because we have to select the body of our character, go over to the physics properties here, and then give it a collision. So the hair interacts with the mesh. So now if we go to frame one and we hit the spacebar, it's gonna be a lot slower, but we're gonna have that nice interaction with the mesh. Um, so for now, before we go any further, because it's a bit of a slow process, let's first of all tab into edit mode. Let's go to our vertex object data properties here and under the vertex groups, let's create a new group. And, and with that group selected, what we're gonna do is we're gonna press A to select everything. And we're just gonna go and assign it. That's gonna be a group telling it where we want there to be hair. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna enable the X-ray and we're gonna select the head. Holding and shift, we're gonna select the bottom feet and the hands and this hand here. And then we're gonna to come to this group and we're gonna go remove. So now if we go here and go Alt A to deselect, and we have that with that group active, click select, we're gonna see only the body is active. So now we have a group, so we're gonna tab back out. Let's go over to our particles and let's go all the way down to the field weights, or not the field weights, but the vertex groups. And under the vertex groups, go to your density and then just type in group, because that was the name and just click on group. And now it's only applying it to that group. I'm just gonna quickly go out of X-ray, go to frame one and I'm gonna hit space bar. And you can see that's a lot better. So at the moment things are really slow. So I'm gonna pause here. I'm gonna go back to the top here. I'm gonna make it only 500 particles. Go to frame one. And I'm also gonna go down to the children and I'm gonna make it 15 in the display amount, but at the render amount, I'm gonna make that 45. So that's just the amount that's gonna show in the render and the 15 is the amount we see in the viewport, which is all okay. So now you can see things are looking pretty cool. Now before we cache this in like we're gonna do, let's add in a quick stage and we'll also get to our materials in a second. But we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna add in a plane, we're gonna scale that plane up about this much and then S, X, scale it along the X a bit jump into edit mode for that plane, select the edge select mode, select this back edge, and let's just move it back on the Y a little bit. 
and then go E and Z to extrude it up into Z and then select this edge and if you go Control B or Command B you can make a bevel and then roll your middle mouse button for more segments. Easy peasy, tab back out, right click and go Shade Smooth and now we have a backdrop. Let's go into our front view and go Shift A, let's add in a camera and then in our right orthographic let's move the camera forward a bit press zero on the number pad to go into camera view and then find a position that you like this is going to be completely up to you this is not really a camera placement tutorial but what we have now is our guy here with the feather dance we have our stage make sure to save as you go and let's quickly go over to our render settings make sure it's Eevee let's able make enable ambient occlusion and then also screen space refle refre reflections and then we're going to go Z, we're going to go rendered and then we're going to go shift A, we're going to go to our light options, add in an area light G, Z and move that up and then you can give this however much strength you want okay so this is a smaller scene so we don't have to go too crazy and then what we're going to do is we're going to um, duplicate that light by going shift D and at this point I'm not going to really go into any details about the lighting you guys can do whatever you want with lighting I'm just going to go with three lights like this just keeping things really really basic I might just bump down the strength on the side light here so the point here is that we just have a nice light and then we're going to select the beak go to your materials and now we're just going to give that its first material and let's just give that a new material let's call it beak and under the base color, let's just make it kind of like a yellowy orange. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. You can texture paint it, add a texture, whatever you want to do. But this kind of thing here of the body, we can make that look a lot cooler. So let's select our body mesh. Let's go to our materials tab. And at the moment, it just has this default material. Let's just call that body. And let's click on the little plus and go new. And let's just call this color. Okay, now I'm spelling it the Australian way there's the Webster and there's the Oxford and then there's also the Macquarie so there's different types of ways to spell color but that's the correct spelling people always point that out anyway that's irrelevant to the tutorial so now we have that color there we're going to go over to our particles again and we're going to go to the render and under the material here we're going to change it to color now you're not seeing anything because we haven't done anything to that material but if you now go into your shading workspace make sure you're in your rendered mode and looking at it you can now take that color material and what we're going to do is we're going to take this base color, just click on it and drag. Now let's get a gradient. So we're going to type in gradient and get a gradient texture. Let's just leave it at linear. But if we now go shift A, search and get a color ramp and place it on this cable, we can now tighten up these values, bring them a little bit closer together. And you can go for black and white, kind of like a Gorilla DeVille kind of thing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this black value and I'm going to make it a nice bright red, kind of like a macaw. And I'm going to take this value and I'm going to make it a nice blue. And then maybe I'll even come here, add in with a little plus, a little middle one. And I'll make that a nice bright green or something like that. And you can see that looks really cool. And that's it. Other than that, you can go to your hair, your particle settings. And under the shape, hair shape, you can make the diameter on the root 0.3. Just to make the hairs a bit finer. And also motion blur. If you go over to your render settings, you can enable motion blur. So when we render this, there's a nice motion blur with all of this movement. So let's just go ahead and save. And let's just quickly go render and do a quick rest test render for one of these frames. And there you have it. You can see that's looking fantastic. So you guys can work on the lighting, the background, whatever you want to do. And what I also did is I just selected my background and I gave that a material as well. And I just made it a little bit darker which I thought gives a bit more contrast. But at this point, you guys can really make it your own. So one more thing I'll show you. Before you render, you want to select your character mesh, go over to your hair particles, the properties, and under the cache, come down here and then make sure this says on the end 115, which is what we have with the frames, and then click on bake. And it's going to bake this into your blend file. And you can see here, um, it's not too slow of a process, thankfully. And there it's done. It's now baked into the blend file. So I'll be uploading this blend file to my Patreon. Check that out. And by the way, um, for all of those who are on Patreon, I really appreciate it because it really does enable me to continue making this content for the community. And I really do appreciate it. So I'll see you guys next time for another Pixar 3D tutorial and happy blending.